guys, how's it going? It's Justine, and today is a very long overdue video. Today I'm gonna go through all of the updated gear that I use to shoot my YouTube videos. Before we get started, if you're a beginner, this was nothing that I would have ever been able to get when I first started making YouTube videos. When I first started making YouTube videos, I was using the iSight camera that was built into my MacBook. And guess what? It worked for me. I get the question all the time about what vlogging cameras do I use, and it's changed so much throughout the years because I used to be all 100% Canon, and I was such a huge Canon fan. I still am a Canon fan, but unfortunately they've kind of dropped the ball as far as consumer 4K cameras go. They currently don't have something on the market that is this small and compact that does 4K. And I just recently did a video about this. This is the Sony RX100 Mark V. There's been many renditions of this particular camera, but this is the first one that I have ever had in the series. The best part about this is it does 4K. It also does 120 frames a second. So if you do like to shoot slow-mo videos and you don't want to lug around all of this stuff, this is the way to go. You can also shoot in various picture profiles so if you plan on doing any sort of color grading, shooting with those profiles will allow you to do that. So since this is the camera that I would use on a day-to-day -day basis because it's small, I can throw it in my purse. It's quite versatile, but this does not have an audio input and that drives me absolutely crazy because I'm so particular about audio and sometimes when I'm editing and there's audio pops and there's a lot of white noise, it drives me absolutely crazy, but I'd already shot the video and since I'm shooting these videos by myself, I can't really monitor the audio, so I just gotta cross my fingers and hope for the best. I always keep this with me even if I have one of these other cameras. I'm sure after this you guys don't have a ton of questions, so hopefully if you have any of those, you can leave those in the comments below. And if I can't answer it, hopefully that somebody else in the comments can help answer it for you. So what we've got going on here, I'm filming right now with a Sony a7S Mark II, which is this camera. I do have two of these, mostly because when I shoot my cooking videos, I love to have the same camera so that everything kind of matches up and it looks very even. So when I shoot the faraway shots, this is the lens that I use. This is a 35 prime and it is absolutely beautiful. So this is the 35 millimeter prime and this is how far away I have to be to get myself in frame. So when vlogging with this lens, it's nearly impossible because I'd be like this. Yeah, that's not gonna work out so well, but this lens is incredible. I do a lot of close up shots with this camera and this lens. So a lot of times if you see me looking off to the side, I'm looking off to this camera and trying to get a close up shot. We don't have two cameras today because I'm showing you this camera. What I love about this is it's incredibly large sensor. So you can also get really great shots at night in low light situations. Situations. This used to be the camera that I would vlog with. I would actually take this around with huge lenses, with microphones, and it was just so tedious and heavy and crazy. And I was like, what am I doing? And I had this realization because this is a very expensive camera and I made a really big mistake. Justine. Did you just drop your camera in there? Yes. Last year when I was on vacation with my family, I dropped this by accident into a pool and I had just bought my second camera so that I would be able to up my game as far as the cooking videos go. Steen. Oh, my heart hurts. That camera is so expensive. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> fell right into the pool and I was like, this is way too expensive of a mistake to make. So I was trying to figure out what is an alternative solution to not carrying around an A7S Mark II, but still be able to get sort of that same type of quality. At the time, there was another option. It was the Sony A6300, but there were a bunch of people who were complaining because they said that it overheated when you shot in 4K for too long. And that's where this guy came into play. This is the Sony A6500. And the biggest difference between this and the A7S is this uses full frame lenses lenses, and this one does not. The sensor on this is so much smaller than this one. I'll give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison. So with the bigger sensor, you're able to get better low-light photos and videos, and it's crazy after using this one so much and then switching my lenses, I'm like, man, this is insane. You guys can see what I'm talking about as far as the sensor sizes. So the bigger the sensor, the more light that is allowed into this camera. My precious. Another lens that I like to use. So this is the lens that I used to use to vlog with all the time. This is a 16 to a 35. So the 16 allowed me to still get a nice wide angle view and I can still zoom in a little bit to the 35. The one that I'm using right now is a 24 to 70. I like this lens a lot, but it's not the best for vlogging because it still isn't that wide angle view. So this is the 24 to 70. Let me give you what it looks like without being zoomed in. And now let's zoom all the way in. So having that 16 is mm, perfect. This is the 16 to 35 and I love this so much because it is very wide angle, yet it will do a little bit of zoom, as you can see there. 
One of the other reasons that I switched to the A6500 is it's a lot smaller. Sometimes I do miss having the A7S II when I'm out vlogging, especially in low light situations, but the ease of use for this in comparison to this, I can use smaller lenses, which are much lighter. Like this is a 16 to 70, which is pretty crazy. This is the 16 to 70 and this lens is so great, but clearly it's not the best for close up vlogging. But what is great about it is the zoom. I do shoot with this if I'm not carrying around this. If I'm unable to switch lenses and I'm gonna be in a situation like an event that I'm not able to switch out to this one, this is a much more wide angle lens, but I also don't get a lot of zoom. This is a 10 to an 18. So the 10 gives a much wider field of view, which is my favorite look when vlogging. And because it's such a wide angle, now I'm using the 10 to 18 lens on the A6500. And as you guys can see, it's a very nice wide angle, but I can also zoom in just a little bit. Hi, Maddie. and he's off. I usually don't have to worry about things not being in focus because the biggest downside of these cameras is the screens. They do not have flip out screens. Like what is this? Come on. Ah! Just flip to the side. Like what are you doing? All of that taken into consideration though. My tip if you're vlogging without a screen is when you lightly touch the shutter button. So if I'm vlogging like this, I'll lightly touch that. That'll usually help get me into focus quicker so I can just go about my shooting and hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm in focus. And there's plenty of times, especially on this lens, that it's not always quite in focus, but you just gotta roll with it. Like what am I gonna do? I can't reshoot something that I shot. What's done is done. Like I was saying about this lens, it's much lighter. Like the size comparison, that's a big difference. And the weight, way lighter. So this is the 2.8 18 millimeter and this is the vlogging lens that I use. The only problem is it's fixed. So whatever you see here, there's no zoom. This is it. But if I was holding the camera, you guys would be about this far away. And all the way back here is what you see. I have you guys connected to my iPhone so I can see what I'm shooting. This is working out great. So when I'm vlogging, I like to use this little Manfrotto tripod. It's small, it's compact. I know a lot of people love using the Joby tripods, but I'm not the biggest fan of those. I am, but I feel like they're not that sturdy. So what I like about this is it's pretty sturdy, even though this is the tripod that I was using that uh, my camera fell in the pool, but we don't have to talk about that. This also has a pretty smooth pan. So when you push this in, a lot of times you'll see some of my shots where there's like a nice smooth pan. I'm just holding that in and going like that and panning. Hopefully you don't have to use the audio because that's loud. <laughs> Speaking of audio, definitely something that's very important. Apologies if I'm jumping around. I'm not very good at organizing my thoughts. I'm just kind of talking as I think of something. So right now, we're gonna discuss microphone. This is a fairly new purchase for me. I bought this a few months ago when I was in New York. This is phantom powered, which means it takes power from the camera, so you don't need any other batteries. You don't need another cord to plug into the camera. It just works. It also has these little left and right microphones, so if you wanna shoot in stereo, you can, but they also move, so if you're doing some sort of an interview or something, you could point one here or one there, or you know, like you get the point. And put on its little, your little microphone thong. Let me see that phone, baby. The A6500 is also a touch screen, which is nice, but I turned it off. I felt like I kept hitting buttons when I didn't mean to. This also shoots in 120 frames, so you can get some super cool slow-mo shots. And for me, going between these two cameras, I really was not able to tell that big of a difference because a lot of the time, since I am on the go, I'm not gonna lie, I film on auto a lot. There's just no time to be messing around with settings. You just kind of have to, again, cross your fingers, hope for the best, and then when you're in editing, you're kicking yourself because you're like, man, why didn't I do this? This is one of the Go mics. This is what I used to use before I used this. So the problem with this that I found when I switched over to the A6500 is it was so close, it was actually getting in my shots. What I love about the Go microphone is it's a lot less expensive than any of the other Rode microphones. You also don't need a battery, so it just powers itself from the camera, but you do need an audio input, which sometimes can also cause trouble because I'll forget to plug it in. From this is this Rode microphone. This one is really nice because it feels a little more sturdy, but it will give 
you a much better sound. It does need a nine volt battery, which is always quite unfortunate, because guess what? The battery's dead. And you know what? No one ever has a nine volt battery. This just plugs in right to the side, but this little guy seems to have solved all of that. The audio in this is a little bit better than this, but when I'm doing a side by side comparison, it's, it's, you really can't tell unless you're listening for it. You may be wondering what I'm filming with. Like I said, it's the A7S II, but this little setup is kind of unique because I have one of the small HD cameras on this little tripod thing, but it has two mounts. So one for my camera and one for the small HD screen, and I'm using Sennheiser wireless microphones that are connected to a Sony XLR input, which is also phantom powered. Plug your XLR input in from this current microphone that I have right here that actually came with this set. And then in the second input, I have the Sennheiser wireless microphones plugged in as well. So that's the current setup here that I usually use at my unboxing desk. So these small HD monitors are incredible and you really do need something to be able to see what you're doing, especially if you're shooting by yourself because how are you supposed to know? These are great, they come in many different sizes. There are various price ranges depending upon how bright you want the screen, the resolution, how large the screen is, and what you plan on doing. So I'll put all of those links in the description below. So everything that I talked about will be down there so you guys can check it out. SD cards, I've been using these Lexar ones mostly because it was the only thing available on Amazon Prime now and I was desperate for SD cards. So I was able to get a bunch of them within 15 minutes on Amazon. These are only 128s, but you're like just seeing why don't you get a bigger card? Well, first of all, that's the only size that they had. And two, when I'm shooting, I kind of like to have a backup of if I'm shooting a bunch of videos. I'll take those SD cards out after I've shot like four videos, set them aside, do not touch them, and start shooting on different cards so I just know that that footage is safe. There's no chance of me deleting it unless I lose the SD cards, which I've definitely done before. It's quite a process. People think this is very easy, and I wish that it was. I wish that I could say that everything is just magic, but it takes a lot of time to edit. Some of my cooking videos can take me anywhere from 15 to 20 hours to edit, and even then, when I'm done, I still don't feel like I'm done. There's so many more things that I could do as far as color correction and music and graphics, but I just kind of run out of time. So unless I have somebody full-time helping me do all of this, I kind of just have to say, all right, enough's enough. You're done now, Justine. One of the downsides to these Sony cameras is the batteries die super quick. So my biggest recommendation is if you do use any of these, you'll clearly figure that out very quickly that extra batteries are a must. I'm constantly carrying around extra batteries and chargers, but the good thing is you can charge this via micro USB. So if you are out and you're desperate, you can always do that. So this has been a lifesaver. One of the most difficult things, especially when editing 4K footage or managing large files and trying to edit is how fast is your hard drive? This is a little teeny tiny solid state drive and I have been using this for a couple of months. My friend Sarah Dici and my friend Nathan who also helps me shoot at times, they both recommended this and it has pretty much saved me so much time. They currently only go up to two terabytes. So I have two of these that I kind of bounce back and forth between footage. So I'll do a shoot, copy the footage here, take that footage and then back it up to another drive just in case something happens. And if it's something that I'm really worried about losing and it was a very big video, lots of time commitment, especially sponsored videos, I'll back those up to a third drive. So this little guy has been great. I mean, look how small this is. Two terabytes, solid state. The problem is two terabytes does not get me very far. I probably have like two videos on this. Two videos, meaning all of the files that go into creating two videos. <laughs> also this little case is super cute that I've been using for my SD cards. I felt like I was so unorganized. I just had SD cards everywhere and there was not a central home for them. Although I am missing some because this used to be all full. So this is also the latest GoPro Hero 5. I used to shoot a lot more with my GoPro, but I really haven't been doing anything that crazy. But I love this little guy. It's super cute. And the best part about it is it's already waterproof, so you don't have to have another case over top of it to make it waterproof. The audio on this one I feel like is not as good as the previous version, which is why I still used to love using the Hero 4. Since this is already waterproof, I think that's probably the reason why the audio isn't that great. It's not bad by any means. It's just not as good as the 4 was without a case on it. And last but not least, cell phones. Cell phone video now has gotten so incredibly good that if you hold it up side by side with either the Samsung or the iPhone up to one of these, it is really hard to distinguish which is which, which is a really great problem because sometimes when I'm filming, I do still, after all these years, kind of get embarrassed pulling this out at the mall. It just feels super invasive. There's just a very nice, 
familiar feeling when you just flip that front facing camera and you're talking to your phone. Maybe for me, because I feel like I did that for so long, but it's something that is so easy to do and it still looks good. Well, I hope this was somewhat helpful for you guys. It's a lot of things, but I think my biggest advice to you guys, if you want to start, I don't want you to be intimidated by this video at all because you don't need all of this stuff to start. All you need is yourself, a camera, and if you don't have a camera, you have a phone, you can edit, you can upload, you can basically do everything from the palm of your hand. Well, hopefully this inspires you guys to go out there and get creating whatever it is that you're passionate about. Go out, make a video, and have fun doing it. Well, thank you guys for watching. I'll put links in the description to everything that I talked about today. I didn't even touch on drones, but I feel like you guys, you get the point. I've done enough drone videos that you guys know what I use. This is such a long overdue video because I get so many questions and people say, oh, I just bought that camera that you recommend. And I was like, I recommended that years ago. I gotta do an update. I'm letting you guys down. With that being said, I will see you guys later because now I have to go edit this video.